can be described mathematically, then it could be uh, programmed into a computer and results would come out faster and you could uh, cure cancer. Everything and, and stupidity. You can, if you can cure stupidity, cure you're doing else. good. Stupidity kills more people than any cancer or any virus. Mm. Think about it. Think about it. Become stupid. Think about it. <laughs> All right, my friend. Listen, I'm going to let you go. It was wonderful. Thank you for making these meetings happen. Thank you. For, You're a hero. For presenting your big toe. <laughs> it's on. a good thing I washed my feet before doing that. Take care. <laughs> Bye. What do you think? Did this help anybody out there? Did it help me? I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Well, I got a mess of a room to clean up. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Well, I hope uh, somebody watches this and enjoys it. Mm, too bad that uh, Rami couldn't hang around. Or, well, it was wonderful to have Mike Taylor, the mathematician, come around and uh, question uh, Luis Elpino's uh, big toe <laughs> theory of everything and uh, hmm. <laughs> sorry mm, so what's coming up so this is March March 6th uh, what's coming up a lot of things happen so this is Saturday morning, and it's almost 10. Hmm. I could go, I get there too late to do a meditation in the room. I could go to yoga. I could call Maria Eugenia and see if, I can, if she's having yoga this morning. But I've got so much to do in this room. Well, I, I've uh, fixed some computers up to the point that, that it's going through uh, Windows Update. They got Windows 10 and Office in 2019 with the essential tools like Word, Excel, hmm. I didn't put access. Word Excel. I did put one note. Word Excel. What other one? PowerPoint. That's pretty much it. I could have put more stuff on them, but that's oh, an Outlook to get things done for uh, one user with their email. So, but I get. Mm, I get two or three more computers to fix. Well, my iPad, I'm gonna see if I can change the screen. It's cracked, never done that before. But uh, it's good to try things that one has never done before and hopefully not fail. But if one fails, that's really not a failure. All right, so yeah, I, I, I hope yeah, someone out there enjoyed uh, this Wake Up and Think Clearly episode of March 6th, Saturday morning. It was mostly uh, Luis, with Luis Del Pino and uh, Mike Taylor uh, was here for as much as he could. And, and then 
he left first, and eventually um, Luis had to leave. So, um, we'll try again next Saturday. If uh, you think of something to make this a better uh, show on YouTube, then send me a, a note. You can put it on the, hmm, maybe I could put my email on here. How can you reach me? You can reach me on Meetup. This is uh, on Meetup. Um, maybe I can write in the chat room that you can read it. Uh, let's see. Oh, shoot. Let's see. Meet up. So, <clears throat> So this is uh, this meet this uh, Zoom meeting is described at. Can you read this in the chat? If you open up the chat, he says meetup.com central hyphen Florida hyphen philosophy. So. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.meetup.com forward slash central hyphen Florida hyphen philosophy. That's one, one place where you can find it. Also, I announced it in the Buddhism for Happiness Meetup, Americanayana Buddhism. I don't uh, do much uh, promoting, but here's my opportunity to promote a little bit. And so you can leave uh, if you want to ignore this. But here's the links. I wonder if they will work for you if you see the chat on the right. I don't know. It's um, the com forward slash Buddhism for the number four, happiness, hyphen Americanayana. It's kind of long. Maybe I'll cut it. And you can find this on the YouTube channel. Let's see if I can go to it now. Um, let's see. I can type in tiny URL. Uh, wake up hyphen Think clearly, I can go to see if that goes to it. Hmm, yeah, it does. Oh. So, wake up and think clearly is found here. So that's a long That's a long uh, thing to remember. So I use tinyurl.com forward slash w hyphen, oops, not, not underscore, hyphen tc hyphen yt, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so Another way of getting out there is by using this link. So it's tinyurl.com forward slash WU for wake up hyphen TC for think clearly hyphen YT for YouTube. That'll take you to the same link as above, which is a very long link, which says youtube.com channel UCK blah, 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 forward slash videos views as subscriber. So that would be hard to remember. But if you can remember or write down, 
pennyurl.com wvu hyphen tc hyphen yt then you'll get there sorry if i'm uh tedious at this maybe i, I should work on a website that will um bring the links together like a playlist of links so that's it uh thank you for, for coming to listen to this this is going to be on a podcast, audio only, at Anchor FM. Anchor FM. Anchor FM. Wake up and think clearly. I should do this uh, for every Zoom meeting. Anchor.fm forward slash wake up and think clearly. Yeah, I, I think if you go to YouTube and just type in wake up, the letter N is in Nancy. Think clearly, just like that. If you go to YouTube, let's see, let me try it. I'm at YouTube. Oh, I'm going to go to another channel. I'm going to open YouTube uh, with whatever channel comes up. Right? Hmm. What channel is that? Hmm. I'm going to have to go to another browser and open up YouTube, right? See what there's YouTube. See what's coming up. What channel is coming up? Because I have several channels. Okay, it's coming up as Buddhism for Happiness channel. So if I go to the search engine for YouTube and type in wake up and think clearly, let's see. Share the screen. Okay, can you see that? I typed in wake up and think clearly. I'm going to hit search. There's my channel. Wake up and think clearly. So there's the videos that I uploaded. I've uploaded more than that. It's just the latest ones, right? Let's see how many videos I've uploaded. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit, huh? Six months ago. Was that my first one? Who knows? I'll have to check over here. I go to my channel. Let's see. Videos. I've got 11 subscribers. Wow. There's my channel. All the videos. Some of these videos might be uh, unlisted or private. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five times six is 30. I've got at least 30 videos. I can look at it this way. Oh no, I can look at it. Hmm. Yeah, some of those might not be public. But if you let's see. Okay. Hmm. I got 45 videos. Looks like. So there may be some are private. Just a few. Or if not private, then unlisted. It looks like there's, there's three that were private. So maybe I got 40. 42 or 41 
they're public. So the first video I put up was August. Why do we need to wake up? Why do we need to think clearly? That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. July 11th, Saturday morning, day August. Hmm. So, I, so I know that I've been doing this since July 11th. No, July 5th. There's a video from July 5th. It was just up. Oh, no, there's a video from June 27th. So, so the oldest video may be from June 5th, The Logic of Charles Peirce. Hmm. But I think maybe the first ones were, that were hmm, Boltzmann's Concept of Reality, that was June 27th. That's a bunch of them. Hmm. Very good. Well, so I thank you for the stop sharing. I thank you again for coming to visit and uh, listen. I'll put this as a podcast. I won't edit it, so <laughs> there should be a lot of um, dead space that might un annoy you, but hang in there. Oh, you, you've hung in this far while you've washed the dishes or whatever, if you use it as a podcast. Yeah, I put down anchor.fm forward slash wake up and think clearly uh, wake up and think clearly uh, instead of A-N-D it's the letter N between wake up and think clearly oh my gosh somebody's here holy free holy Rami Rami Katane you're <laughs> you joined us Welcome to Wake Up and Think Clearly. We're still having a meetup. I was talking to myself all this time for the past half hour, and <laughs> I was about to end the meeting, and Rami showed up. That's, you know, try 30, and it took me 35 minutes to realize it's now 10 or five minutes after 10. So wow. good job humbling. Good job to hang in there. I was telling all my uh, hundreds of subscribers, no, there's only 11. <laughs> and, uh, maybe some of them are, are me subscribing to it with, with different e uh, YouTube at, uh, Gmails. And so I was telling all, all my faithful listeners on the podcast that you can find us at meetup.com Forward slash Central Florida philosophy. That's Central Florida with hyphens in between the words. And also meetup.com, Buddhism for happiness, hyphen Americana Yana. That's uh, Buddhism for the number four, happiness, hyphen Americana Yana. And also you can find us on YouTube at, at the Wake Up and Think Clearly YouTube channel. That's... Uh, you go into YouTube and type wake up and think clearly with the letter N in between wake up and think clearly. Instead of A and D, I use N. <laughs> and for those for whom English is a second language and hyphen is not a word that's familiar to you, uh, we're, we're speaking of the, the character, which is a dash, which is the horizontal bar that sits halfway between the top and the bottom of the character space. Usually found on the uh, keyboard between the zero and the equal sign. Let's see. That's right. 
And then if I use the one above it, what's that do? That's the underscore, looks like. That's the one we don't want. We want the dash, the one that's levitating, right? Yes. <laughs> and we also can, when you're doing the dishes, you can also listen to these wonderful uh, um, sessions or episodes in podcast form, audio only, at anchor.fm forward slash wake up and think clearly. And it's also available on Spotify. We're everywhere. We have thousands of of uh, people listening to us. So you may never be. Well, at least, or at least I'm listening to them a thousand times. I sat in on a, on a talk you, once. Um, I think it was maybe one of the Association for Computing Machinery um, UCF chapter talks, and the the writer, or rather. The speaker who, who had published some papers, probably on like the IEEE website, he had noted that all the tools were made for creator. Um, even back then, even the writing tools, think about a word processor. It's, it's made for someone who's producing a document, right? And, and that there was such a proliferation of, of papers that were being published that hardly anyone was actually reading the things. They were just all busy making them. Wow. <laughs> we're busy creating content that no one is reading. Well, here, here's another yeah. possibility. Um, what if more people have to do be born in order for us to have an audience. That's right. We need to procreate faster so that we have some, some humans that can, and we have to educate them on how to read content online first, and then we have them read it for us. There's, a, there's an app that I haven't been using lately. Is it called Blink List or something like that? You subscribe to it, and and it reads you reads you summaries of books. So I, I put it on, and I have it read the How of Happiness, and it goes through instead of one having to read that big volume, it goes through and it summarizes chapters or sections for you. Wow. How about this? Lately. How about this? Uh, just as you have a tool that's already giving you the online cliff notes, and sometimes it's even an already transposed in the audio form, so you can do it as a secondary task to your whatever primary task is doing the dishes or whatever. Imagine people in the future may not even know what we mean when we say doing the dishes. What we mean is where. We, if we don't have a machine to do them for us, we do them in terms of we wash and clean them. We put them up to dry. Or we dry them and then put them up away. We don't know what, what people in the future, what they eat off of necessarily. Um, but There will be archaeologists that will uh, specialize in exploring the past and bringing up a meaning to what like uh, a personal ad means to uh, um, what's after millennials or whatever. <laughs> after Gen Z? Gen double A? You know what they're called? I, they're I, be no called? idea. No idea, Hyrule. Um, and actually, Gen Z were only the 13th American generation. Oh, there's Gen Z. Yeah, but Gen X was only 13th. I think you're squarely an X. I'm a Zennial, which is sort of a caretaker generation that exists between the Gen Xs and the uh, Millennials. Because, um, yeah, so we, we have uh, sort of the skepticism of the Xs and the optimism of the Millennials. Because I was listening a little narrow. to the Pina Colada song in... And then it came to where 
it says that I wrote a personal ad and I thought it wasn't half bad. A personal ad in a newspaper, in a newspaper. What is that? What is a personal ad? Well, I guess maybe you could write a personal ad in Craigslist. Hmm. Well, part, part of those ads have been, oh, during the course of the last presidential administration, they were banned. The, uh, the, the, the hookup, because uh, like Lost and Missed Encounters is one of the funnier parts of Craigslist that you can read. By the way, a newspaper is when... <laughs> I have to speak just in case the, the, the knowledge becomes lost. I don't know. <laughs> it is printed page, but, but it's printed just for the purpose of a day, and then you, then you toss it out. You throw it in the recycling, and prior to that, they just threw it into the trash or they wrap their food in it. That's what a newspaper was. It was just news of the day, print it on paper, and then disposable. But then there was also an archive of them kept in this material called microfiche, so it'd be transferred onto film, very tiny pictures on a, on a sheet that you could stick in a microfiche machine to be able to read what the news of the day in, in the past was. And we have in our universities and colleges and various libraries many, many, many tons of microfish had tucked away in various places around the world. And uh, a lot of that's been digitized, but the issue about the digitization, one of the most interesting things about digitization, if this conversation is ever listened to in, through some sort of means other than the ones that you've specifically published, Hiro, it would actually be the result of um, what was originally called TIA, Total Information Awareness, which is gathered various other names and set up under various private entities and corporations, but it's basically data centers for, for, for teeing, T, T-E-E -E is a Unix utility that allows you to take any stream of data. It could be text, it could be binary data, anything. You take it and you, you, you send one version to the screen as normal, but the, the T utility, what it does is it allows you to, to split a copy and route that copy elsewhere. So it could be to farms and farms of hard drives that, that just do nothing but collect everything that goes across the internet. And then they've got tools, mostly forms of AI, that go in and try to find the, the useful, interesting things. It, it, it sounds like the kind of thing that DARPA would have funded back in the 90s, right? Or 2000s at least. But, but that may be our greatest archive of, of what went on for the last 20 or so years. If it survives and if, it's not, if those hard drives aren't recycled to, to gather new information, because I'm sure it's a lot of stuff to process and it's a lot of stuff to store. TEE -E stands for, in computing, T is a command in command line interpreters using standard streams, which reads standard input and writes it to both standard output and one or more files, effectively duplicating its input. It's primary use in conjunction with pipes and filters. Right. Hey. So, uh, yeah, I'm using like, that as an example. I, I'm speaking of it not in the, in the factual, but in the conceptual. So imagine the equipment, but about the internet, so that, so that, um, various artificial, well, basically it'd be parsing tools. It could be based on keyword search. It could be based on any number of things. But the, the idea is that you, you just copy everything that, that goes across the internet and then you let your, your programs, your software, try to find the things that could be threats to national security. I think that's, that, that I believe was the, the idea behind total information awareness, which as soon as it was announced uh, to the public, got a lot of pushback and then it kind of went un underground and got itself a bunch of different other names and it's probably part of the thing that's uh, that black box part of government that we don't really hear. Oh, total information it's private awareness. Yeah, was a mass detection program by the United States Information Awareness Office. It operated under its title from February to May 2003 before being renamed Terrorism Information Awareness. What? But did it have earlier origins? I don't know. 
Like yeah, those were all things that were just news of the day back in the early 2000s. Oh. Now, Project maybe Noah. you're a conspiracy theorist for having knowledge of having remembered reading the news of the day back in the day. TIA's goal was to revolutionize the United States' ability to detect, classify, and identify foreign terrorists and decipher their plans. <gasps> so maybe it's inspired by the no. 9 11 2001 uh, terrorism uh, attack. Has the AUMF, which was passed what, like seven or 10 days later, within two weeks, the, the authorization to use military force, which has been nothing but renewed year after year uh, since it's. Hmm. No, that's right. It hasn't. So, no, actually, the, the war against terrorism has, uh, they, they've exhausted, I mean, the, the, the phrase is the, 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 the cats come home or the, the, the roosters come home. What, what, what's that phrase? Come home to roost. <laughs> the idea being, you know, we used to do psychological operations across the world. And since at least the 2016 election, we've been doing psychological operations domestically. <laughs> oh, we've got um, the, the, the war against terror is being brought into line with becoming a now new domestic war against terror. And what is terror but an idea? And who imposes the idea? Now, if you look at like let's say a 1963 edition of the Oxford English Language Dictionary, terrorism is a form of rule by fear often imposed by a state. And then the example would be the reign of terror from the time of the French Revolution. However, in the more common... ...published recently, they dropped the part that it comes from the state. The more contemporary editions uh, state that it's usually from a foreign influence. Now, for those who, um, let's say they go into public office, they become a soldier, they become a politician, they apparently make some sort of pledge to, the, to uphold the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And um, if you don't get your vaccination, does that make you a domestic terrorist? Because that's, that's a question we may face under this current administration. Why is it difficult to define terrorism? Hmm. The difficulty in assigning a truly comprehensive definition to terrorism lies in the fact that not only is it challenging to be specific when motives, targets, and methods differ so broadly from case to case, but the complexity of untangling the overlaps within each of these categories makes the task virtually... Hmm. Virtually what? And this, this is from an article in 2009. Mm. Virtually. What I'm hearing is, is, um, is eight years worth of the fog of war when you say it's from 2009. Mm. I wonder, this article from 2009. Hmm. Talks about domestic. No, in 2009, it wasn't considered domestic terrorism. Maybe that came later. Check out um, if you have a chance. I'm, I'm not. Uh, um, I'm neither censoring. Sorry, sorry. C e n s u r censor, or nor am I um, promoting. But I. Am, you take a look at C. J. Hopkins' The War Against Populism which was a series of essays he, he started publishing back in January 10 of 2019. And just uh, the most recent one was published, I think, earlier this year or at the end of 2020. C.J. Hopkins' War Against Populism. 
they have can the war again against what Populi populism mm -hmm. populism the war on um, populism do you want to share your screen share screen Mm. Mm. The war on populism? The war on populism? Uh, actually, uh, add consent factory. Yeah, he, he, he did it as essays as well. Looks like he, he actually started before then. But you can get them online. I scroll down some more. You should be able to find it through his personal website. That was uh, fourth from the bottom. Mm. Wow, you saved me $12. Potentially, I don't know. I think this is just a review. You may want to click on, on the left uh, where it says articles, essays, etc. I've This is the first time I've ever been to his personal website. Uh, yeah, go ahead and start at uh, Consent Factory, the February 23rd. Or, you know, oh, actually, I don't know that I've seen this. Yeah, I certainly haven't read this one. The, the one that was prior to that. Uh, but you, you can see he's got a, um, a section. The vaccine, this, not miss, but this. There's a difference, right? Right. This information is purposely uh, uninforming. Misinformation is disinformation without intent. So this meaning there's intent, information is information, disinformation is counter information, something designed to make you ignorant or keep you ignorant. And misinformation is just the propagation of disinformation minus the intent. Wait a minute. Yes. Misinformation is minus the intent? That's correct. So, when a person creates a disinformation and he finds way to have it propagate word of mouth or sharing of links to share, <laughs> or yes, <clears throat> through all social media Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, TikTok, <laughs> email. That, be, that, that Let me, information is mm -hmm. misinformation. It becomes misinformation as soon as the disinformer lets it go. Right, yes. Now, uh, uh, a bit of criticism. Here's your grain of salt, or at least my grain of salt that I'm handing to you uh, regarding C.J. Hopkins. I don't know exactly where he's coming from. I know that he's a British play playwright living in Berlin. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if he's a communist. The satirical views are. I think he's just trying to be interesting because as a playwright, that's his job, to create interesting content that people will consume. Uh, but his his book there on the right that you see actually has a uh, a bit of praise from, from Matt uh, Taibbi, the Rolling Stones um, uh off uh, article author and commentator. Oh, it's free on Kindle. There I'm you gonna go. Buy it. Because <laughs> oh. the price is right, huh? Am I in the right? If you have the unlimited, you could get those. Would be the earlier essays, but uh, oh, I have to edit and, um, my Kindle. Uh, I would it's say. Already full. <laughs> Right, because that's that's the ultimate. I, I bought, this goes back to the tea idea of um, of uh, do you have the storage? It's like a, it's like asking the question: Do you have enough bookshelves? Which is funny in our case, since I've helped Hyro move from one location to another before. Look, I can read the review and know what it's about, and I have to. Buy it. Isn't that great? That's like the best thing about Amazon, or or, or the. Uh, 
sending their reviews. Try. I also like goodreads.org for that. I've got to go attend to my son for a moment, get him something to eat. Mm. Okay. Wow. Interesting. He says, it truly has been a nasty year. And that was 2020. Buy this book before the grid goes down and the gasoline runs out and Amazon delivery vehicles can't make it through your humble abode or the post office in place is placed in permanent paralysis. Oh man. It's, it's, we're almost there. No, nope. no, nope, the gasoline hasn't run out. It's just gotten, sort of has, it's gotten more expensive. Well, it'll continue to get more expensive because you know, assets cost nothing, right? The grid hasn't what? gone down except maybe in Texas. It's well, that, that was the, um, uh, that was the big threat from the World Economic Forum. They were saying that the, the next pandemic would be digital and that the power grid would be attacked. And then I also saw reports of thousands of attacks on our, on our electrical grid uh, shortly thereafter. Wow. How could they, how could that happen? How could what happen? I guess um, to, to be able to bring down the the digital grid. Well, so drop out the internet or drop drop out the the the, the, the point of sale uh, networks or um, super information highways that would have to be knocked out, and that might be good enough. Like big centers, maybe. Well, that. There are many ways to go about it. That's not something I specialize in because it's not something I'm interested in doing. If anything, I, I'm interested in either preserving the existing, else... Um, Wait, isn't it good to know how to, it. how to knock it out so that we can prevent the knockout? Well, who's we? Uh, we as in uh, mischievous uh, minds, maybe a 13-year-old a that figures <laughs> out how to knock it out. Well, I, I would like, it, you know, that then that 13-year-old is doing us a favor because that, that would be fairly harmless, right? I mean, people might be inconvenienced. Some actually may die if, they're, if their lives are dependent upon uh, life-saving life support systems and it knocks out their life support system. But the hospital at the, powering that life support system should have a, a, a diesel generator to act as a backup in case the, it does go down. The 13-year-old create a, a virus that's pandemic that infects all the uh, data centers and is able to get in there and, and in, in a little uh, back door and knock oh. them all out all at once. Fine. Wow. Well, we would affect, we would, we would expect our like federal state board. government and the, and the power companies all to be doing hardening of their systems and testing of their hardening of their systems oh, to ensure that they are secure and solid, right? so that we can continue this infrastructure. But then again, we'd also like to be able to rely upon our voting systems, but I don't think that electronic voting is mature enough for us to necessarily be able to depend upon the outcomes of, of their processing. And there are many reasons for that, that, that I think would be too boring to get into at this time. But um, uh, you can, if you, if you go back a few steps in your browsing, to Consent Factory. Uh, back there, you'll find the collection. Uh, yeah, you'll just have to hit back on your browser a few times. I want to show you how you can actually read a web page version of these. Another back, please. This one. No, this one. Maybe I have to go back at another. Yes. All right. So, the um, um, you you can read this at your will, but 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 let's go up to the top, and uh, let let's go to um. Oh, geez. Um, uh, let's go to the address bar itself and just uh, remove everything after the dot org. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> cool. 
All right. Uh, I just want to you later. There, there is a specific URL that that uh, gathers all. But here, here's the more the, the thing that I was referring to was the new normal domestic war on terror, and the, the that's all, folks. It's part of that same um, listing of uh, of essays. A new war on domestic terror. Oh my gosh. Ow. It's just like the original global war on terror, except that this time the terrorists are all domestic violent extremists. Ow. GV, homegrown violent extremists, GV, violent conspiracy theorists, theorist extremists, DCTEs. Violent realist, denialist extremist, VRDE, uh -oh. insurrection, micro aggressionist extremist. Uh -oh. Wow, they've come up with. Uh -oh. I'm not sure. I think he, he he wants to be entertaining, so he may have added some of his own after a period of time. Like the people who make yeah. liberals feel uncomfortable. Where do I fit in? Maybe uh, maybe I'm people who make no. What about? Maybe I'm people who make uh, conservatives feel uncomfortable. Uh, the, the point, <laughs> the point being that that last acronym would 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 qualify to at least a third of the country. I think. Hmm. But again, I don't know if he's if Hopkins is like a communist, and this is part of a ploy to kind of continue to describe and he would be like an english socialist if he were and this might i think he's just trying to entertain people to keep reading his work ultimately but um it, it's entertaining just take it with a grain of salt okay. i was listening to uh the january 30th talk the one that ended in georgism and uh, hearing about uh, our friend Joel, who, 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 the, who that we can call Joe, how he describes that, uh, that their airports are closed down until the end of April, which no. is still the case. I, I'm only speaking with Cairo. No, our son got the Listerine. Oh, okay. I've got to go attend to something. He got the edible Listerine. How much, how much of, of what is promoted in media is reality, or is it just a construct of, by man to enable a certain class to rule a, a much larger set of people? How much of, of uh, what kind of media? Um, any. I mean, we, we could pick on mainstream media for a moment, but any media, period. Mm, all, any and all media, how much of it? Well, all media might be too, 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 too large a scope. Let's just, let's just limit it to rhetorical media. How much of rhetorical media is... Look up, look up the word if you're unfamiliar with it. Rhetorical? What does that mean? Re oh, rhetorical. Relating to or concerned with the art of rhetoric. What is, what is meant by rhetorical? 
uh, relating to and concerned with that of speech, writing formally and effectively specialized way to persuade. Oh, okay. How much of, of re rhetorical media is uh, designed to keep those in power? In power. And how much of it is designed to to bring new people in power? Yes. How's that? How much of rhetorical media is designed to keep those in power in power? And how much of it is it is designed for those that are not in power to gain power? And how much of it is is to truly inform those uh, not in power and those in power uh, uh, as to what it, the reality is as it is to hopefully improve the situation for everyone. How how much of it is wise uh, messages to make uh, fruitful changes for all of society? Is there such thing as as media that uh, helps, that benefits society? Or is it just a competition uh, between those in power and those without power, or even be between those in power yet competing for more power over the others that are in power? Are you familiar with Randolph Bo Bourne? Randolph Bourne. Randolph Bourne? Yes. He was a social critic. Born as, uh, in, as in born again? B O U R N E. Oh, uh, I'm here. I'll, I will share screen if you'll allow me. Okay. How do I run that? Or oh, you can do it? Yes, you can do it. All right. Oh. This guy, he had a curved spine. And, um, right, so 1886 to 1918, he was actually taken out by the, um, the, the, the 1918 1919 pandemic. Whoops, whoops, there's a Randolph Bourne Institute, and he's got an entry in Britannica. I'm just reading off my screen here. But uh, the reason why I bring up Randolph Bourne is that one of his last works was called The State, and it was an unpublished essay that was published first in something called Untimely Papers. And again, I'm just repeating what you can find off of fairuse.org. Let, uh, let me make this larger. And easier to view. Wow. So, what the Constitution left us with, and I know that uh, in commentary, James Madison, who, who could be described as the architect of the Constitution in the United States of America, he, he realized this and almost sort of lamented after the fact, I think, that what it left us with was essentially a two-party system. What this document um, the state does is, is define for us what that, that two-party party system is about. Come back to this document every year at least, usually a little bit more often though. And just because it's it's so rich and descriptive. I have a hard time observing it all at once, but it, it, it is um if if you're of the mind who can take it all in, go ahead and do so. Yeah. 
The state, Randall Bourne. Right. Now, the state, regarding the state, there's someone who came after him. His name, <coughs> our enemy. Here, let me see if I can find this. Albert J. Knock. Here we go. American author. So, uh, just as Thomas Paine did in his opening uh, paragraph in part one of uh, Common Sense did for us in 1776 by, by clearly defining the difference between society and government, what Albert J. Nock does for us in 1935 is distinguish government from the state. Uh, Uh, well, this this all folds and falls neatly. Well, not so much common sense because it, it it's much more nuanced than the the uh, this particular type of distinguishment. But what Nock does in this work, our enemy, the state, is say that uh, the state is bad or evil, and that there is yes, indeed, actually a thing known as good governance, which by the time you get to the early seventies, you'll find that there's a war against good governance by a certain political faction that led to the, the rise of the political right. Um, but that comes later. Here in 35, uh, he would say government's okay, but then there's this thing that he attributes uh, into his definition of what, uh, what Nock would call the state, uh, being um, or, or anything that you, you could easily identify as being bad, such as, uh, let's say, cronyism. For instance, you would say that that would be a feature of the state. And he, he goes back and references Herbert Spencer, which you might remember from your own private studies, uh, the, the famous, I think he was an English uh, utilitarian, if, if my memory is serving correctly. So that, that's how we got back to here because we were talking about war. Our enemy, the state. I found it on feed.org, F-E-E, -E, Foundation for Economic Education. Hmm. I, they would have a copy of it there too. In uh, HTML form with links to the parts. When you go back, you'll see a copy of it in the URL here from famguardian.org. A PDF version of it's been placed there as well. So, there, so he makes a distinction between government and state. And uh, so, when did state uh, the state uh, model, and when did it start to get implemented? Is that something new in in, well, uh, in history? The, the, the state is an idea that happen? goes back to at least Rome. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's this pagan idea of, of establishing order. What about Greek cities? Were they like city-states? Yes, and of course, Greek cities, you, you had city-states. You're right. So it would go back to Greece prior to Rome. It would be farther back. So is it possible to have a government, a, a society of some form, that doesn't uh, require a state? 
What What about local governments? I guess you couldn't count them as states, or could? Well, like, one, one of the great the things about the, the state of Florida that we live in is that it is primarily county run. Most of the people who live in the counties don't really pay attention to right? Because we have this wonderful thing in our state constitution, which was, which is, by the way, the fifth constitution of the state of Florida, which was uh, set forth in 1968. And every 10 years, it comes up, uh, uh, comes under review. And we just did one of those reviews uh, recently. Wow. That, that's all part of that 1968, our fifth and current state constitution as amended most recently. Um, I'm, I haven't looked too deeply into how it was, but uh, the, the idea is that uh, what, something that's unique about the state of Florida is that uh, we enable something called um, subsidiarity in a way. Subsidiarity is the idea that, uh, that the reins of power should be closest to where the application of the power is found. What? Subsidiarity. Subsidiarity. Yeah. Oh, that sounds uh, business like. This is a subsidiary yeah. of that. Subsidiary, yeah, they have the same roots. The principle that I'm going to let, I'm going to let uh, Duck Duck go read it for us. Subsidiarity. Oh. That's no. <laughs> The principle that government power ought to reside at the lowest feasible level, i.e. at the local or regional level, instead of the national or supranational, uh, supranational level, unless the latter presents clear advantages. So subsidiarity, meaning we here in Orange County, Florida, are you living in Orange or Seminole? Seminole. Okay, so you in, in Seminole County and I in Orange County um, are... Most of the decisions are done on at the county level in accordance to an allowance that was written into the state constitution of Florida, which is an interesting document. I do recommend reading it sometime. What it allows is, a, is for uh, state charters. And what those charters do is basically act as constitutions for the territory of the county. And something like 95% of the population of Florida, each, um, they, they live within a, uh, they live within a county that has its own charter. So that most of the decisions, most of the governance is actually handled at the county level. Um, and it's not even the, the majority of the counties since we have 20, something like 27, and I could be mistaken. Someone would have to fact check me there. But we've got some like 27 county charters, but there are 67 um, charters. Hi. Or 67 counties. Yes, dear. You were done with dipshit anyway, I, I left you with plenty of interesting things to continue to think about and research. I wish you a great rest of your day. And Bye. Uh, you make this a distinct uh, okay, you're done. meeting. All right. I'll split it when you show up and have it. You're done. I should like where we talk about state statism. No, things like that. Well, he's gone. I think. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm gonna stop and get something to eat. Well. This is the second part of the meeting was a delight, and I, 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 I learned a lot. This was, uh, this was uh, an another realm of the mind, the realm of how a society is to be governed with individual minds taking over in commanding society to do certain things against other societies, to go to war, to have
trade with others. Hmm. Interesting. So I learned about uh, several people. I learned about um, about uh, uh, Albert J. Nock. He wrote a classic in 1935 called Our Enemy, the State. Maybe I should, wow, well, that's a long, it's a long link. I'm going to make a tiny URL out of it. Uh, Rami found another version of it, but I'm going to make a tiny URL out of it. Knock enemy state. How's that? <laughs> Knock N O C K enemy state. Can I remember that? Then I'll put it here. So if you go to, well, that's the original. Then if you go, then if you, uh, if you can remember the word knock, is a knock on the door? Oh, without the K, enemy, state, put them together and put tinyurl.com forward slash in front of it. Then you, when you click on it, it will take you to hmm. oh, I'm gonna take a while to open up. It opens up in my uh I have a browser called Brave. Uh, <clears throat> check in your browser before Accessing feed.org. Please allow up to five seconds. Mm, it's an odd website. It's redirecting me. And so it takes about 10 seconds to loaded. So our enemy high, uh, comma the state is about politics. So this, uh, I'm trying to understand how there can be a state, a, a government without a state, without statehood, <clears throat> whatever state means. Uh, anyway, that's something new. And he also introduced me to, yeah, oh, here. Fair use, Randall born, the state. Okay, fair use. And I'm born, and I click on it, it goes to, no. And I should share. So, yeah, there's an the article by Randall Bourne. Oof. The state. Whoa. It doesn't get any bigger. The state, Randall Bourne, you left it unfinished, but it talks about the state and the parties and going to war in society. Let's see. So that, that's, um, and he mentioned that Florida has a, constitu a constitution that got rewritten five times and on the fifth time, 19, what, 68 or so? It was the last time, the fifth time? 
in that they review it every 10 years. So it got reviewed in 78, uh, 98, 88, 98, 2008, 2018, right? That's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, I know very little bit about government and politics, so it's still you know. So I hope this uh, benefited some, some people. And uh, I'm learning. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. There we go. So I'm about to end this meeting. So if Rami comes back in, I won't be here, sorry. And besides, I think uh, he needs to do things and I need to do things. So until next time. Mm. Uh, thank you. And and uh, live well and prosper, be healthy and, and, and kind and wise. Thank you. I'm sending out to myself. Bye.